Hello everyone, the stream is starting. How's everyone doing today? Hi Ron! Who else do we have here? Oh, glad to hear you're on vacation. I'm doing pretty good, honestly. I got up really late. <laughs> but, uh, besides that, I'm... I'm doing pretty good. Honestly, I'm really excited to play, because... I have a new build. I've swapped away from Holy Flame Totems, because I kind of hit their cap as to how powerful they were. And I'm looking forward to showing off uh, the new build that I've started working on. It is by no means finished, nor is it even properly set up fully, but it is starting to look pretty good. Also, I hope that this time, this stream, I'm actually going to properly switch windows when I need to, because last stream, I definitely had 20 minutes where I had swapped windows, but I didn't properly do an OBS, and it fucked everything up. I was just playing the wrong window the entire time. So, I guess I'll just start the stream by opening a map so you can see the new build. And then I'll explain it. Uh, my crystal lore is not bad. This build is projected to eventually be more than twice as powerful as the Holy Flame Totem at its absolute best with its best gear. So, I am really excited. So, I am using a Holy Flame Totem build with Despair, Skitterbots, and I'm using Volb Light to uh, back it up. I'm using Determination, Skitterbots, bark skin, and eventually uh, aspect of the spider. Though my aspect is too too expensive to use right now. Hi Han, thanks for coming. <laughs> oh, things are a bit too loud. One second. Okay, that's better. So, these are Hex Blast totems. Basically, how the skill works is if something is if something is hexed, so anything near my skitter pots, then it gets hit by a light by the Hex Blast strike and then it explodes and hits everything around it. Because of how Hex Blast works, it automatically shocks, freezes, and ignites things. Or it gives the ability for it to shock, freeze, and ignite. And that allows me to shock, freeze, and ignite basically everything I interact with. So everything is currently shattering, which is great because that means on death effects have no effect have no effect on me. Let's open this up. So, the reason why everything's shattering is not because I have a 100% freeze chance, or always shocked. It's because I'm using a very specific setup here. I have both Tripannon, which is a 
two-handed mace that has 100% critical strike chance on it, but it's otherwise has shitty stats. That doesn't matter, though. With Sandstorm Visage, which makes the base spell critical strike chance equal to that of the main hand weapon. So this automatically makes all my spells 100% chance to crit, no matter what. Uh, and if something is, has 100% chance to crit, or not 100% chance to crit, if something crits, it is guaranteed to apply elemental ailments. So what that means is that every time it hits something, even if it doesn't kill it, it will freeze it immediately. So that is a layer of survivability that it has. It will shock it immediately, so it will take more damage, and it will ignite it, so I have that other benefit. Uh, I have Phenomous Weave to go with Aspect of the Spider, just to make it stronger. I have Marley's Fallacy to give me lots of extra global crit strike multi. Uh, the less critical strike chance does not affect it because Tripanon just overwrites it with its 100%. And then I just have like a basic chest plate because I don't have my nice one yet. This will eventually be the Covenant. And then I have the Magnate because the Magnate is just amazing. Oh, and also Profane Proxy to make sure that uh, my Skitter bots are actually giving me the aura. So whenever they go near anything, they will Im immediately curse it. And if the Hex Blast hits it, it removes the curse and deals damage because it's removed a curse. Then the Skitter bot, since it's still nearby, reapplies the curse immediately. Which allows me to hit in quick succession. But it just kind of looks like an orbital strike, which is really fucking cool. Also, like, it is really stupid powerful. And this build is not set up properly. Like, I don't have the chest plate, which is going to give me a lot of my damage yet. We're going to go through this map, and then once we finish this, we are going to look at the path of building for it. Just go over how the build works. Or how it's supposed to work. Uh, currently, I believe it's sitting. It, it's it has fluctuated a lot because I like swap in and out survivability and damage and stuff, trying to find the best balance. Uh, but I believe it's sitting around seven million DPS for the uh, ideal starter version of the build. Uh, this is not the starter version of the build yet. This is this is not ready. This is kind of just like my rough approximation before I have the gear that I need. Because I need three cluster jewels, and I don't have them. Currently, the build is a little bit weaker than the Holy Flame Totems were, and a little bit less durable. But the ability to freeze everything makes it a lot more sturdy in general because that has that as a level defense which honestly is better than a lot of the other levels of defense that i've used before or not levels layers of defense i do very much like it uh, i've missed i guess the boss room is over here i love being able to just plop down my totems and walk away and they just deal with everything But yeah, this, 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 holy shit, my brain's not working. This build generally is functioning around tier 7 right now, as its comfortable tier. I have done up to tier 10, but tier 7 is its comfortable state. Uh, I do, I am expecting it to be strong enough like easily strong enough to like wipe out the shaper uh by the time it's ready uh i am hoping to uh, i'm going to attempt the uber bosses as well with this build once it's ready too and that is going to be really exciting because i mean only a very few select builds can take on the uber bosses oh, no 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 explosion this boss is always scary because they always explode on death. I'll take the Kikazaru. Hmm. 
No! No, no, no! Explosion! <laughs> I didn't notice that till the end. Ugh. That almost was very bad for me. Okay. What do we have? Ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh! A 23... A 123 Flame Link. I know someone who would love this. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna just grab that there. <laughs> Definitely want that. Uh, what else? Hmm. The rest of this stuff is actually pretty awful. That's fine. I'm gonna immediately pop the flame link into my offhand to start leveling that. Fuck everything else I was trying to level. This is way more important. <laughs> I had level 12. Okay, that's level 12. I'll get rid of that. Is the sound balance okay for everyone? Everyone able to hear things just fine? Most importantly, being able to hear me over the music. Because I'm vain and I want you to hear me first. <laughs> Ooh, I might want Jade Flask at some point. Cast speed. That would be very similar to the ideal that I would want. Put that over there. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to transition over to Path of Building. And I will load it up because I forgot to do that earlier. And I will reload it, because it loaded on the wrong screen, which means that it will be fucked up. Because Path of Building does not like it when you load it in a portrait resolution and then move it to a landscape resolution. It gets very angry. Okay, I'm swapping it over now. Transitioning. Cool. You should now be able to see the Path of Building. So this is my Hex Blast Hierophant. Ooh. I'll deal with that later. This is my Hexter Blast Hierophant. Uh, I'm using the exact same Ascendancy that I was using before, just con Conviction of Power, Arcane Blessing, uh, Pursuit of Faith, and Ritual of Awakening. So Totems, Power Charges, Endurance Charges, because they're always good, and Arcane Blessing. I, admittedly, I am a little bit tempted to remove Conviction of Power, because I don't use the Power Charges really, for the most part. Um, actually, no, that's that's actually not true, because I do have 4% spell damage per Power Charge, though that's only 20% spell damage. I have some Crit Multi here per Power Charge, but it's only 20%. But I, I am I have been considering removing that because if I remove Conviction of Power and I remove Ritual of Awakening, I can go over here from Divine Guidance to Sanctuary of Thought to allow me to add more auras. And then I can Forbidden Flesh and Flame to grab uh, the Ritual Awakening again. Because Ritual Awakening is actually a really cheap Forbidden Flesh and Flame because almost no one gets it who... If, if you want Ritual Awakening, usually you just go Templar and you just, or just go uh, Hierophant and just get it. But in this case, it's actually, if you want to take Sanctuary of Thought, you can cut it out and then reallocate it with Forbidden Flesh and Flame just because it's so cheap. Uh, currently, I have Sanctuary allocated through that, so that does give me a lot of life regen, which I don't necessarily want to lose. But, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. This is how the Hex Blast build is meant to be set up here. I'll just go over it in order of uh, starting with the main, starting with the passive tree. So, as usual, when you start leveling this build, you allocate all of this. This is the main area, just the main cluster of things. They give you just nice little bits of, um, little bits of everything, damage, survivability, etc. As you head off, you'll head down here. And up, 
rushing immediately to Ancestral Bond, because it is the most important thing in this entire build. Grabbing Primal Manifestation and the Totem Mastery that reduces the damage that you take, because it takes from the Totem's life inside of yours. Grab Purity of Flesh and its wheel. Grab Sovereignty and its wheel. Grab Arcane Capacitor only after you have already gotten Arcane Blessing, so after your first Sensi. Uh, you will want to grab Devotion at some point, just because the Devotion wheel is really strong. Uh, grab Sanctuary of Thought much later, in general. We're going to be heading up here. We're going to be ignoring Arcane Potency because it isn't as strong. We are going to grab Heart of Darkness here. And we are probably... Where is it? The first thing you're probably going to grab is, just because it's cheap, the uh, level to all Chaos Gems, but you lose 10% of life and energy shield when you cast it. That I find that tends to be like a good way to start. Eventually, what we're going to be using is the 5% chance to apply maximum Wither stacks when you uh, Wither. Because that's going to be more. That's going to be very good later on. We have our Disciple of Forbidden just to scale with our power charges we already have. Give us another minimum power charge and another maximum here. We have careful planning here for dexterity. I'll explain that later. We grab crew preparation and very importantly mental rapidity, because the cast speed here is really good. Heading backwards, this is when you'd be grabbing your Arcane Potency, your Sanctum, Sanctum of Thought, your Tireless Wheel, going over here to Iron Will, and to Constitution. Then we start grabbing the Jewel Sockets. So we have a big cluster here. We have a Chaos Cluster, as you would expect. Wicked Paul, just for damage. Uh, Touch of Cruelty to hinder things just for damage, and also gets a little bit of survivability by things not being as fast. And Unholy Grace, which really hits hard. Then we use that to go into our Chaos Dot Medium Cluster, which has Septic Spells, which gives you a Poison Chance that isn't really all that valuable. It doesn't really matter. It's mainly for the cast speed, which actually is worth it, surprisingly. And then Eternal Suffering here, which is the most important of all of these cluster notables, which is the chance to inflict wither when there's five or fewer wither stacks. So that means that you can get up to effectively six wither stacks just by hitting things, which is really important because wither stacks are a big deal. Currently we're sitting at 8.7 million down here as the full DPS. If we take off the wither stacks, we dropped down to 7.1. It's about 15% of our damage just to have these six stacks. And if our Chaos Mastery triggers to bring it up to maximum stacks on one of those six, then we suddenly jump from 8.7 million to 11 million. Because Wither is extremely strong. It's also very hard to access, which is why it's so strong. Uh, I, I'm living at 6, though, because 6 we can reliably get on any notably strong mob that can withstand the hits. Then finally, we have the Snaring Spirits, which just hinders things even more. It's It works in conjunction with Touch of Cruelty quite well, because this hinders on crit. Or sorry, hinders on hit, but that is rarer than just something being near my totems. So it's Touch of Cruelty and Snaring Spirits kind of synergize. Uh, Sleepless Sentries is a big damage boost because it gives you Onslaught, which also gives you movement speed as well as a lot of damage, which is really nice because this isn't really the fastest build. And then I just have the Forbidden Flesh and Flame over here in the Jewel Sockets. But of this entire thing... The first thing that you want to go for is to try to get this Chaos Dot Cluster. Uh, the Large Cluster and the Totem Medium Cluster aren't nearly as valuable as this thing, 
Because once you have this, you can get Eternal Suffering, which gives you Wither. And Wither is the most viable of all of it. Then we have Apex Mode over here. This is mostly just a placeholder. It uh, is an extremely cheap duel that gives 25% increased spell damage. That's all it exists for. It's not meant to be like anything crazy. It's not meant to synergize with any of the effects. It is literally just a stand-in there because it is cheap and it gives damage. We're going to be looking into uh, ways to make that better, though, because I'm sure there are some crit multi jewels that would be way, way better for it. Okay, now moving over to the items. Okay, we're still on the path of building screen. Good, I'm now paranoid about that. <laughs> so we have our Tripannon for 100% critical strike chance. We have our Sandstorm Visage to give us the 100% critical strike chance from Tripannon. Our Chestplate is the Covenant, which is going to make us use up a lot of health doing this. But it gives a level 29 added chaos damage support. And Hexblast has a 340% effectiveness of added damage. So all damage you add is multiplied by 3.4 times. Which is pretty crazy, because some skills only have like a 0.3 instead of a 0.3, or instead of a 3.4. So that's a big, big deal. Then we have Phantom Mrs. Weave, which add, gives us Aspect of the Spider, which just, it adds uh, spider webs to things that are nearby, slowing them. Actually, I think it actually hinders them. I don't know if it's, if, if it's a hinder or just slow, but it slows things down, and you deal more damage as well as flat chaos damage, which again, scales very well. We have our boots here, just uh, basic boots here for resistances. We have Marlene's Fallacy here, which gives us Charisma as well as uh, lots of crit multi. Uh, charisma is just... that is the uh, the mana reservation one over here. It's the biggest mana reservation node in the entire passive tree. Uh, I eventually want to remove this from the build if I can, because it is bloody expensive. Uh, I mean, it's probably only 100... Chaos in total for the anointment, which isn't all that bad, but I do try to decrease the price of my build as much as I can, and that is not the cheapest way to do it, probably. Then I've been playing with either Mark of Submission, so Curse on Hit, versus. Do I not even have it here anymore? I don't have it here versus Profane Proxy, which just anything that's near the Skitter bots gets hexed. The reason why I'm bouncing between the two of them is because with Mark of Submission, the first hit will hit one thing, but it will not trigger the extra damage or the area damage. Uh, but it will mean that every single hit after that will trigger the area damage and the extra damage. Profane Proxy mean, will guarantee that you will hit that extra damage and that AoE damage immediately, almost every time. But Skitter Bots have a tendency to run away after they've added an ailment to something, and they'll go to the next pack. Which means that if something strong withstands you, they have a tendency to not be there, and suddenly you're, you're just firing off hits to an unhexed enemy. Which is, can be a bit bad. Uh, the way around this is to use Profane Proxy and to get a uh, chance to... Uh, not not chance to. Uh, to corrupt your Phenomus' Weave to have a curse on hit. Just any of the curse on hits. Just to make sure that it is still getting that damage. Currently just as cast speed because cast speed is really powerful, but ultimately I'm trying to figure out which way to go with that. I'm not sure what's going to work best. Then we have the Magnate for just 
a fuck ton of damage. It, it's a million damage on its own. Uh, I am not hitting the triple damage level here, which is very unfortunate, and I'm trying to figure out if I can do that somehow, because if I can hit triple damage, this literally goes up by a million DPS. But I have to somehow fit an extra 163 strength into this build. That's a fucking lot. That's... I need, like, four separate items with suffixes, with strength suffixes on them to do that. Just, like, if I'm just using rare gear, so I don't really know how the fuck I can manage that. I'm still working the kinks out on this one, so that might... That might change. We'll, we'll see how that works. Uh, I still have it running, though, because it is still best in slot, despite the fact that I don't have access to the triple damage, because the Magnate is just a ridiculous... Just a really ridiculous item. Then we just have our various flasks. So life flask, mana flask. Uh, we have a granite flask for armor, sulfur flask for damage and cast speed. And we have a tincture here, which gives us culling strike as well as chaos damage pen. We also have chance to... We also have hit steel frenzy charges, which... It's not reliable, but if, let's say, you're in a map where there's something that creates Frenzy Charges... Well, we're at 8.7 million damage right now. Let's see what happens when we add our three Frenzy Charges. 10.3. It's a 1.6 million damage increase if that happens. So, it is a... It's an empty modifier that doesn't really have a better option to put there. So just having that for like the rare extra 15-20% damage to the entire build is totally worth it in my opinion. And you can, if you really think a map's going to be challenging to you, add a uh, monster's gain frenzy charges on hit to the map. And that is dangerous because that means they'll hit you harder, but also you'll steal them from them. So... Bit of a high risk, high reward there. I've already gone over most of the gems here. Then we have a careful planning here to make sure that we have enough decks. So the real the reason why I have careful planning here, despite the fact that technically our decks requirement is 70, so that brings us up to 137, is we have two different things here. We have hypothermia and we have void manipulation. Uh, when we're using Avoid Manipulation, we deal more damage. It's 8.7 million. When we use Hypothermia, it's 8.2 million. So it's 500,000 less damage. Uh, and it also suddenly costs 111 decks versus four, 70 decks. So the reason why you'd pick Hypothermia, despite it doing less damage and having a more annoying dex requirement, is that Avoid Manipulation does not give you elemental damage. So if you, let's say, have a friend who has, I don't know, a flame link support, then you can't get any benefits from that when you're using Void Manipulation. So I have specifically added Hypothermia here so that I can group play with people who I play with, uh, just as an extra thing. Technically, if you don't care about that, you can just ignore the dex requirement entirely and just go Void Manipulation, which is what I intend to do when I'm not, when I'm playing solo. So I'm leaving on Void Manipulation, because that's technically what most people will be doing. And then I have Inspiration here as well. It's not allocated. I'm not sure if I want to keep it. The main reason is that it's 147 mana per cast for the totems, and 272 life per cast for the totems. So they hit very fucking hard. Like, they hit your life and mana very hard just to spawn them. So you have to be really careful with them. And I have considered allocating Inspiration, which decreases the mana cost to like make it easier to run with other auras, but that increases the life cost by a lot. Also, it decreases the damage a lot, because Inspiration doesn't really benefit this build, seeing as we don't need more crit chance and we don't do elemental damage generally. Even if we have a support with us that does Flame Link, 
still this elemental damage still isn't is nothing. Okay, now that we've gone over the items, we will properly go over the scales now. So this is still a work in progress. This is still version one. I'm going to have more versions after this. But for version one, we have uh, a four link here with flame dash, faster casting, portal, and wither. Uh, wither is so that you can self cast wither onto bosses if they happen to be focused on your totems and you have a chance just a second to cast them or just a second to cast it because this will allow you to actually put the stacks above six wither stacks. And if you can even get, let's say, two wither stacks on it that way, let's say it's already sitting at six because so your totems, and you want to add two extra wither stacks because you have a, a, literally a one second to cast, your damage goes from 1.7 or 8.7 million to 9.2. That's 500,000 damage just by like casting for a sing literally a single second. So wither is there as an option. Uh, stopping and casting a channeling skill in the middle of a boss fight is, is often a bad idea, so I don't have it set as a reliable thing. And also, you wouldn't really have it during mapping and stuff, for the most part, just because, I mean, usually you're going fast in mapping, and you drop a totem and run. But it will help you with the more stubborn things. Then we have a two socket here. These are not linked up, does not matter. Technically, none of this stuff needs to link. Uh, except for, like, faster casting and wither really are the only things that really need to be linked together. So you technically you can have a two-link six socket and be just fine. Uh, I have these four things linked together because it's pretty easy to get a four-link, generally. And it's nice to have faster casting on Flame Dash and Portal. And then the guard skill is separate and the same with Blight. Uh... Vol Blight is here just, or Blight's here just for Vol Blight, uh, just because when you cast it, it adds 20% uh, uh, chaos damage debuff. Uh, like any any enemy that uh, you that you hit with chaos damage takes 20% more damage with Vol, once Vol Blight has hit. So that's just there as a um, debuff to enemies and a buff to you. And then Molten Shell because you have Molten Shell on your left click, and the Vol is just. If you just put the vol on your uh, on your main bar and hit it whenever you feel like you need it, then we have our auras, uh, auras and buffs. I have righteous fire here. You can just pop on vol righteous fire if you want. Uh, it gives 1.6 million DPS, so it's really strong. But it is also scary to pop vol righteous fire, as always. Then we have Determination and Summon Skitterbots with Enlightened Support because this this build like really suffers from mana reservation efficiency. So that's also part of the reason why I'm considering going over here with the Ascendancy and grabbing Sanctuary of Thought and then Forbidden Flesh and Flame to Ritual Awakening. Because if I have Sanctuary of Thought, I can remove probably both the Enlightened and the Charisma uh, Anointment. And there is a much better anointment that I could put on it that would do a lot more damage, which is surveillance. Which is all the way down over here, right here. Nope, that's been Opticon. Yes, surveillance. Does 30% totem damage, and totems apply 1% increased damage taken to enemies near it. So 5% increased damage taken because there's 5 totems around them and 30% increased totem damage. It's just generally a good thing. The other option is also Disciple of Slaughter, which is very fucking strong. Uh, outright... Oh, actually, Outright it's only a little bit weaker than Surveillance, so that's probably better, plus it gives you a chance to get more Frenzy Charges. So that is also a really, really, really good option that I could pick up instead of uh, taking Charisma. That does mean we lose a bunch of our life regen, because we'd be dropping Sanctuary and the Consecrated Ground, as well as a bit of our damage, but... I mean, eh. <laughs> this entire thing is about trade-offs. You find the, the best trade-offs that give you the best mix of things. And being that this is only version 1, this build will keep getting better. So we're going back to skills. We finally have our Hex Blast here. 
So we have Hex Blast with Spell Totem support because it's a totem. We have Multiple Totem support because it's a totem. Then we have Increased Critical Damage support because we already have a maximum crit chance, so crit multi is the most important thing to us right now. Cruelty, just because more damage with hits. And then the Void of Manipulation Hypothermia, which I've talked about earlier, which you can swap between. Uh, mainly, most people will be using Void Manipulation only, unless they have a support who gives them elemental damage. Then we just have Despair, that's been plunked into uh, the Mark of Submission slash Profane Proxy, depending on whichever one that ends up being picked. We have Bark Skin, which comes from our Warren Ascendancy, and Aspect of the Spider, which comes from Venomous Weave. So here's our Warren over here. We've just taken Oath of the Magi. We have no sockets in our gloves or boots, so we have 20% increased maximum life and 30% increased movement speed. We have Coated Blade for Tinctures, which is the Culling Strike Tincture we have. We have Wildwood Blessing for the aforementioned Bark Skin. And Lesson of the Seasons, which I am very excited for, because you... For each bark that you are below maximum, so if you've been hit a bunch, you have a 10% chance per bark you are below maximum to avoid non-damaging ailments. So that's shock, sap, brittle, chill, freeze. Oh, there's actually a list right here. Squirts, chilled, frozen, brittle, shock, sapped. Uh, and then just per bark, so if you have uh, just full bark, you have a... Uh, 100% reduction of damaging ailments. So you can't be bled, ignited, or poisoned if you are at 10% bark. Or sorry, 100% reduced for duration. So even if you get hit once and that hit is the bleeding, igniting, or poisoning hit, it still has only a 10% of its duration. So it makes you not immune to status ailments, but it's very, very fucking strong. I've played with other other secondary ascendancies, but as far I just like Warden. I just do. It's really hard to replace it. What else? I believe that is everything for now. So that is mainly how the build works. We have we're, we're destined to have uh, four million health, which is or four million. Oh my god, uh, four thousand health, which is great. 500 life regen, mainly from the uh, split between the Consecrated Ground we have and the Ritual of Awakening, which gives uh, percent life regen per totem. We have a bit of unreserved mana, which it fluctuates a lot as I'm working on the build, because I'm trying to keep it so that I can actually summon the damn totem, but I'll still have my ores, so that's been a kind of a problem. Uh, then we just have a ton of energy shield for no reason. I don't even know where all this is coming from. I think most of the chest plate. I, I don't have any real use for it. It's just there. So I guess it protects against non-chaos hits. So that's kind of nice. Uh, we have 7% physical damage reduction. No. Let's try it again. We have 77% physical damage reduction. No more resistances. Awful. Bloody awful. Chaos resistance. I have yet to figure out how to fix that. <laughs> so that's that's a problem. Uh, don't get hit by chaos damage with this build. You get one shot pretty easily, even through full health. And then a 77% speed mod modifier because of the 20% of it's from the sleepless sentries that give you onslaught, 30% of it's from the warden, and the rest of it's from your boots. So it's actually like a decent like a decent speed build now because of Warden and Sleepless Sentries, but without both of those, you move slower than molasses. The totems themselves are fairly durable. They have 2100 life with 2400 armor. Their resistances are okay. They're nothing to call home about, but they're okay. And there's a totem duration of nearly 22 seconds, so they're more likely to either die or be desummoned before that time. 
100% chance to freeze, 100% chance to shock, uh, 20% chance to poison. So if you want to roll in any poison, uh, want to roll in any poison uh, synergies, you can also do that. I haven't really seen any reason to yet. I have no chance to ignite, and I have yet to figure out why, because. Hexblast does have a chance to ignite inherently, because it is all damage can ignite, freeze, and shock. But I I don't know. I genuinely have yet to figure out why it can't ignite. <laughs> I will note I have spell totem support at twenty one at level twenty one instead of level twenty, just because it gives a bunch extra damage. And it also gives a bunch of extra health to your totems to make them more durable. And then Hex Blast, the uh, at level 21 Hex Blast is what's giving us 8.7 million. And then if I turn it down to a level 20, it drops over 500,000 damage. So the uh, the damage that you get, just like flat damage, is really important because it goes from 1500 to 2200 up to 1,700 to 2,500. It's a really, really, really big increase. I don't... I believe the next... No, every single level is crazy, actually. Never mind. If you can get extra levels on the Hex Blast, it is obscene. Which also is why I have some alternate uh, gear here. So I have a Covenant here that has plus two to AoE gems. Uh, this would be extremely bloody expensive to get, which is why it's not on the actual character right now. But if you can afford it, this is this is your big upgrade after the end of every everything else you've gotten. Because it is the big crazy damage boost. And hell, if you if you're someone who can know you can just fucking make money. You can do... Actually, does that... Okay. You could do plus one to socket gems and plus two to socket AoE gems. A chest plate like that's probably somewhere between 7 and 15 div. Uh, so... You're talking thousands of chaos. So that's very prohibitively expensive. But technically... If you can get that, you can bring this build over 10 million easy. And I'm probably going to be able to do that at some point just because, I mean, I play this for, for YouTube and for streaming, so I play a lot of it, which means that I have a lot of chances to earn money. So I probably will earn enough eventually, but the average pers average player will not have this. It is an obscene, obscene extra option. Um, oh, the Venomous is Weave, actually. This is supposed to... That's wrong, actually. So, the reason why this is wrong... Okay, that is... We're actually at 8.4. So, this other Venomous adds 8% uh, cast speed as a corruption. That is just... That is another thing that uh, costs a chunk of money, because Venomous's Weave is already expensive. So this is another option that you can, another buff that you can get. But again, it's an expensive thing. It's a very late game thing. So that I don't want, I try to not have like the expensive corruptions be the main thing that you see. Yeah, that's tanked a little bit more too, because I removed the uh, the little bit of damage that you get from the Searing Exarch Eater World mods here. Unfortunately, this is not a league starter. This is an expensive build. It is a very expensive build. The six socket tripanon can be six socketed yourself, and that's probably your best bet. But it can be expensive. You can use replica tripanon too if you happen to find one of those that's cheaper for some ungodly reason. But it's hard to say. Uh, I got obscenely fucking lucky and i got a six socket tripanon for one c because someone decided they wanted to just get rid of it i don't understand why but whatever so this is somewhere between 10 and 50 c i'm gonna say 
The Sandstorm Visage is going to be sitting around 250C as well. Maybe 300, it depends. That assumes you do not have a corruption on it. The Covenant, a six link Covenant, I'm not going to even quote you the amount because it's going to be expensive. Any six linked unique chest plate is going to be expensive. And the Covenant is like a fairly commonly used one, so that's a pain. Uh, Phenomus's Weave, I find to be worth about 10 to 20 C. The boots, I mean, that's variable, 10 to 20 C. Uh, Marlene's Fallacy, you could usually get it for under 5C. The Charisma, for, again, the Charisma anointment there is like 100C. I'm going to just ignore that because I don't even know whether that's going to be what I want to pick in the end. Uh, the crit, the various crits, uh, why can't I think of the name? The thing that I used to make a ton of money on, Catalysts. The crit Catalysts are also pretty damn expensive in general, but for some reason this league they're a bit cheaper, maybe because they got moot rolled into Ultimatum, and Ultimatum's the new fun thing to do. Uh, Marcus Emission is worth basically nothing. Uh, if you use Profane Proxy, that's going to run you somewhere between like 20 to 50 C. The Magnate can be up to 100 C. The Forbidden Flesh and Flame are probably a, a Rediv between for the pair. Apex mode is worthless. Careful planning is maybe 5 to 10 C. The clusters here are probably about 60, 60, and. No, that's not right. Probably about 60 C, 80 C, and 60 C. So ultimately, this is, without any of the extra stuff on it, this is already an expensive build. You're probably not going to finish the build for. You'd be lucky to finish this build under 600 C. But this is what it costs to get an 8 million DPS build. So as far as I'm concerned, that's reasonable. I mean, I'm sure there's there's more experienced streamers and more experienced build crafters who've made something better than this. But for me, this is this is pretty good. Okay, so... That is the build guide for Revision 1. I will be releasing a Revision 2 in the near future, probably on Thursday, realistically, because I'm very avidly working on this, because it's extremely fun, because <laughs> I love build crafting. It's my favorite part of the game. Uh, for those who are watching on YouTube for this, just for the build video, thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and... Yeah. God, I'm such an awkward duckling. <laughs> Okay, so for Twitch viewers, let us swap back to the actual game. Swapping, 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 swapping. Moving, moving, moving. Okay, swapped over to the new screen. Okay, we don't have Wither or anything yet. Um, we're missing a whole ton of shit, as you can probably tell. We have just random shit in the helmet. Uh, just wherever things have fit. Uh, we have our Blight over here, Determination, Molten Shell here. We have Life Tap support, just... Actually, this isn't even supposed to be connected to Molten Shell. This is literally just to level it. Frozen Legion to level, Vigilance, Vigilance Strike to level. Like Most of the stuff is just... is a really scuffed build for now. I did, however, pick up a 2023 Hex Blast to start with, because... It was actually relatively cheap. I have a, I have a level 20 multiple tome support, 2023 20, critical damage support, 2020 20 faster casting support, 20 inspiration support, which does need to be replaced with void manipulation, and a nice spell tome support, because spell tome is important. Actually, speaking of which, just for now, Chris totem placement speed. Okay, so let's see what type of trouble we can get up to with just this build. Let's try to push it a little bit and do some tier 8s, I think. Mm, what's fun? 
I do like City Square. Grave Trough is okay. Spider Forest is okay. And Wasteland. Honestly, the, all of these are okay. None of these are particularly bad maps. I like City Square the most of all of them, though. I'm gonna put one. I'll put two chisels on each, just because I'm low on chisels. So I have physical damage reflection, which I think isn't a danger, because yeah, I have no physical damage right now. Spell suppression, but I don't care. I I can have spell suppression. It doesn't matter. Or I can be spell suppressed. I don't really care. It's not that big a deal. Later on, in like higher tier maps, when it's a higher level of spell suppression, yeah, that's a big fucking deal. But for a tier 8, eh. Though this is a weak build, so who the fuck knows. Oh, I've seen the level. Bear Trap. Turn on aspect the spider since I have my totems on right now. Turn it off so that I can summon more totems. I'm currently just doing the toggle on and off with it just because I don't have enough reservation to allow allow me to use it properly. At least not the way I want to use it. Oh wow, that red beast just got demolished. And we're about to see well, like one of my favorite parts of this build in a second. I love strong boxes with this build. Just watch this. Done. It just like melts everything suddenly. It's so cool. <laughs> it's such a power trip. I love it. And I mean, the games like this are just pure power fantasies. So it's the funnest way to do it, I find. What are you? Oh, you're. That's why you're not dying, because you're a rare beast. Ooh, lots of things leveled up. I'm still pretty slow, I gotta say. I'm not a huge fan of that. Oh, that's an Immortal Shrine. That's an Immortal Shrine. Yes! Okay, boss, boss. Come here, boss. I'm just going to sit here now. And turn on Aspect of the Spider. <laughs> I am completely and totally invulnerable right now. Just gonna run into as many bot any packs of mobs as I can before it runs out. Does my vol blight to debuff things? But to run out, but to run out, but to run out, kill everything. Cool. Einhar, you aren't doing your job. Einhar, do your job. Thank you. Okay, so we have one last thing in this map. We have an ultimatum. Is the music balance okay with my voice? I'm never able to tell that. I think I'm going to pick Raging Dead. I'm actually really liking Ultimatum. I don't know why. Like, I really, I, I'm not going to say I hated it originally, but I did not like it in its original League because it was overtuned to all hell. Oh, Razor Dance, awesome. I have lots of physical damage reduction. Resistances, Blustering Cold. I'll pick Resistances, that's fine. 
Okay, keep you on my aspect since my totems are still up. Turn off the aspect, spawn my totems as soon as I add this. Turn back on the aspect to debuff things. Turn off the aspect, we summon totems. That's basically the gameplay of this. Your critical strikes are unlucky. So, lucky and unlucky basically mean uh, lucky takes the... You have two rolls and it takes the best one. Unlucky means you have two rolls it takes the worst one. Uh, so, unlucky has no effect on me because both rolls are going to be 100%. But... Uh, the extra damage is a problem, because I am an entirely crit build. <laughs> so, Razor Dance it is. And back onto the aspect. Ooh, an offering! Yay, those are valuable right now. Okay, aspect off, totems down. Honestly, this is this is a pretty damn good build. <laughs> it, it's like already doing good. Ooh, I don't like any of this. I <sighs> choking miasma is so hard to see. I find, but I mean, also, oh, I think I kind of see where it is. It's in the middle, I think. Uh, since I'm moving around a lot, I'll take Blistering Colds, because as long as you continue to move, Blistering Colds not too bad. But you have to keep moving. This is probably my last round, though, before I have to call this one. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm. that's not worth it. I try to play them pretty safe, generally. Add my intrinsic to here. Oh, I forgot to, to you totally forgot to mention it. I'm level 89 right now. We're gonna get into 90 right now. 83%. That last boss was so easy. <laughs> I, I love the invulnerable shrines. They're so nice. The only problem is like actually getting to the invulnerable shrine through the monsters, if you struggle with that. Waiting for the game to catch up with me. Oh, waiting for my encoder to catch up. Okay, there we go. Wisps. Wisps. Wisp, wisp, wisp. Yellow? I want yellow. Oh, is that the Oathbreaker? That's the Oathbreaker. Okay, imperfect, 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 perfect. The perfects are usually worth something. I usually basically always ignore the others. I'm. I don't think. I know there's a thing to buy certain ones. I'm gonna grab this. Nope, it wasn't a thing. I need to learn what the challenges actually are for this, because there's something to buy a bunch of stuff from the Breaker of Oaths. And all, all of them, I think. Torment, Anarchy, Ambush, Beyond, Blight, Expedition, Ultimatum, uh -huh. Okay, 8, okay, so that's just doing the different passive trees, Markle Realms, Enhanced Equipment, Thaumaturgy. Okay, cross contamination. 
Meaningful Masters, Sextants, Magnificent Modifiers. All the different buff things. I could swear there was something to, like, buy. I mean, maybe I finished it. Undertaking. Okay, I guess that... I guess that it's just... There's just something that I've already done. Collect Wisps. Oh, this this is what it was. This was buying. Uh, you need to buy eleven of the uh, eleven of these options, and that's I've already done it. I've gotten sixteen of eleven. <laughs> okay, so I'm good with that then. Let's see what sort of wisps I can get. I've learned even if you don't like the color of the wisp for whatever reason, you can still pick them because you do occasionally get chances to swap them out to a different color. And when I say don't like a color, that's what I'm talking about is uh, pink wisps give you a lot of item rarity, yellow wisps, so vivid, give you a lot of item quantity, which is by far one of the best. And then there's primal wisps, which I like the most, they do. They give them also a lot more crit chance and crit multi, but they also give them the ability to drop additional currency items. And the additional currency items are really good, especially if you can get a mixture of yellow and blue. You can get quant and wisps. And rarity is the worst because it uh, mainly focuses on giving you rare gear, which often is not worth much money at all. Unfortunately, most rare gear is worthless in this game. Cool. That wasn't very good for Wisps, but whatever. I mean, there'll be more. Oh, I don't know. I should actually mention it, too. I don't even know if people know this. The Wisps, when you walk out of the forest, get spread between... Uh, uh, like, the various monsters you encounter. Uh, so, like, when you walk up two monsters, they have a chance to be empowered by the wisps you found. And eventually they get spread out between all the different uh, people. All the different just enemies you find. I'm going to clear out this area, and then I'll do the ultimatum. Okay. First words. What buffs do I use? Oh, well, I have Huck now, so I do have combat ready. So I do have a buff there, but most of my buffs are permanent buffs. Like, all my charges are minimums. So, buff expiry is good. That's fine. Okay, activating aspect. Monster hits cannot be evaded. I don't evade. Oh, I do technically Arcane Surge as a buff, but I apply Arcane Surge so often. Do oh, Unstable Catalyst! So Unstable Catalysts are only worth 2c right now. They're really cheap. This is actually a really good time for me to buy the Unstable Catalyst for my Marlene's Fallacy. Uh, I don't really want to give a guaranteed spell suppression. I'll pick Razor Dance. Okay. Swapping back to my totems. Not be slowed or stunned. That's probably a that's a bad thing because I do have freeze, so that would prevent that. I'm gonna pick Raging Dead. Okay, get my totems back. Ooh. 
Ooh, chaos orbs! Yay! Raging dead. Okay, turn off aspect. Turn back on totems. Oop, getting a bit dicey. Yep, my totems are getting eaten. Ooh, that's a level 21 blade blast. That's not actually worth much money. I might be able to convert that, though. In the, uh, I might be able to transfigure that to make it even better. I don't know for sure if you can transfigure corrupted things, but I'm hoping you can. Stop killing my totems. I don't appreciate it. I really look forward to when I can just like activate my aspect without having to swap it on and off, because that's really annoying. Uh, I'm going to call it because I have some valuable stuff. Okay, Unstable Catalyst. I already have a 233% uh, one, so I'm going to just upgrade this one. Oh wow, that gave me 2% crit multi already from one Unstable Catalyst. That's that's a big deal. That, that's two percent more da or two percent increased damage there. Since I guaranteed have a hundred percent chance to crit. It's less if you don't have a hundred percent chance to crit, but I have a hundred percent chance to crit guaranteed, so I feel like I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit in this map. Just a, just a nagging feeling. Hello, Maven. Ooh. I, she punch, she punch hard. Apparently I'm, apparently this build's really starting to shape up. That, that, yeah, that was a tier eight boss and it just kind of melted there. It's pretty good. It helps that, like, my gems have been leveling and stuff, too. I've also been... I've been toying with another idea lately, actually. Um, like, for this specific build. Let's place down some totems so I'm safe. Going to my passive tree. So... Under Chaos Mastery, so I do have the, like, the Inflict Wither is so, like, stupid powerful. But I do wonder if in certain boss fights it would be worth it to uh, swap over to the deal 10% more Chaos damage to enemies which have Energy Shield. Because certain big bosses you can kind of guarantee they'll have Energy Shield if you're only doing Chaos damage. Because you're not chipping away at their Energy Shield. So if they start with energy shield, they'll keep their energy shield, which means they'll just straight up do 10% more damage, and more is always better than increased. So that is that is something worth considering, but that is something you swap for specific boss fights, and also I don't know if it's better than Withered. Like, I have to run the numbers on that, because I haven't done that yet. But it is it is something worth considering, because I know, for example, the Shaper has a ton of energy shield usually. The sub some monsters just have energy shield, a lot of it. So, and I think most bosses usually do. So, it is potentially a really good bossing ability. It would be very bad if you try to do mapping with that, but, like, not very bad, but it would be a lot worse than the Wither, that's for sure. I don't think I have any access to other Chaos Masteries either, so that is another issue. So, like, I can't just do both of them. Eh. 
And this map is over. Yeah. Wrong button. Wrong button, Krunk. Or Kronk. You know, it kind of terrifies me that now I've turned... Now that I'm in my 30s... Well, I just turned 30 recently. It's kind of terrifying to me that... I Like, that reference I just made to Emperor's New Groove will just completely fly over a lot of people's heads now. Like, the heads of adults. And that's just... I don't know, that's kind of awful, I'll be honest. I'm like, no! I'm old! I'm so old. Okay, wasteland map. Gonna do the invitation after I finish up with uh, my level. Wildwood. Once my totems are finished. Okay. Wisp, 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 wisp. Wisp. There's some blue there on the monsters. It's not a path to follow, though. Oh, blue? Blue! Currency! Give me currency, wisp. Blue. I want some blue. Give me all the fucking blue. I mean, I could call it primal, because technically it's primal, but... Oh, troll shaman. Uh, were you supposed to be intimidating? Because I kind of wasn't paying attention. Oops. Okay. Well. Uh. Ah! <laughs> I guess a tier 8 is only going to be so intimidating when you have decent bossing XP. Bossing uh, damage. And this skill does fairly good for bossing. Okay, getting as much yellow as I can. Vivid Wisps. Getting some more quant. Uh, kill all you. Pick up any other stuff. Okay. I find it strange that the boss laughs at you when, like, you walk into the darkness and get kicked out. It's like, they're like, aha, you fell into my trap, and I'm like... But I just wanted to leave, and you're more convenient than the portal. Like, you... You seem really excited about something, and honestly, I can't figure out what. So you know what? I'm glad that you're happy. Because the most important thing is to entertain yourself, I guess. <laughs> or at least that's what the uh, uh, King of the Mist seems to feel like. He sounds so happy. Sacred Grove. I'm actually pretty decent for the Sacred Groves, thankfully. It's gonna hide behind here. Oh fuck! The problem if I hide behind there is the uh, my stupid skitter bots don't come out here. Which is one of the reasons why I like Mark of Submission, because even if you lose that first hit uh, of bonus damage from having a curse, like, you don't... It's easier to hide.
But if you're able to just tank things, then it is generally worth it to... I don't know. I, I do really like the Profane Proxy, and you, I struggle a lot more with getting enough resistances without it. So I might I might just keep the Profane Proxy. Like, I have it right now because of the Holy Flame Totem build. Use Profane Proxy very heavily, but I don't know. Does this have, like, Curse Reduction or something? Oh, it's a Soul Eater! Okay, and then it temporarily revives. Don't care. What are you? Why are you so? Str oh, you're crit resistant. So you're resistant to literally everything I do. <laughs> well, now that's unfortunate. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna focus the uh, yellow if I can, because. Just like Vivid Wisps, Vivid Life Force is the best, for some reason. I don't know why, but it's always the most expensive. I'm just going to ignore the, uh, the fractured items. I don't really care. If this was a higher tier area, I would care about the fractured items, but... The fractures are going to be like item level 75, not item level 83. That's a really, really bad, awful creature. Can you just like die? Thank you. That was really scary how big it got. <laughs> That's why I can't summon totems, because I'm an aspect on. Ninety three percent. Approximately. Yeah, ninety three percent. God, I love watching these totems do Oh a hidden is that a max rolled hidden potential? That's a max rolled hidden potential. Uh, oh, I mean, that's only three chaos, but still, that's still pretty cool. I like hidden potential. I've never used it, but it seems really cool. It's for each magic item equipped, and for some reason, it counts tinctures as magic items equipped, even though it doesn't count flasks. Which is weird. So technically, you could use Hidden Potential and four Tinctures, then only use one of those Tinctures actually. I think. Or at least that's what Path of Building seems to think works. So, maybe. But that is an interesting and exciting synergy. It also doesn't feel like, some, like a synergy that's supposed to be there, though, so that might get nerfed. Or it might just be wrong. I guess I could just out uh, just uh, equip the or socket the uh, hidden potential jewel and just swap a flask and a tincture and see if it get if my tooltip DPS changes. It'd have to be a tincture that has no effect on my DPS though, otherwise it would pollute the test. Oh, hi, Vol. I'm ah, coming back, Vol. Don't worry. Okay, well, maybe he's going back. Hey, friend. What you doing? Oh, you're dying. Okay, well. Then he, he wasn't really a thing, I guess. I, th this this build is quite strong. Like even even just starting out, it's really strong.
Wait, did I not pick this up? Or did that just drop? I'm supremely confused now. Whatever. Okay. Okay, what is a useless tincture for me? Actually, do I have a dual socket? I think I do. Yeah, I have a dual socket right there. So I need to not, like, actually activate it. Uh... Okay, this does nothing for me. Oh, I can't equip tinctures right now, because I don't have that uh, mastery. Right. I have less lesson of the seasons rather than going for coated blade yet. Uh, unfortunately, you need to kill the king of the mist to get your fourth ascendancy point. And I just found out the king of the mist, uh, the king of the mist you actually need to kill is not the one that I. Okay, I have a very hard time taking anything seriously with the Templar's expression. Also, the buttons here make it look like giant eyebrows. So. <laughs> I have a very hard time <laughs> a very hard time being serious with this face <laughs> it's just there's just something wrong here <laughs> I don't know what's wrong but like he looks just so like this mixture of enraged upset and constipated that I just can't I just can't grasp what emotion that is okay no uh <laughs> what the hell was i even saying uh okay the king of the mist that you find in the wild woods normally is not the king of the mist that you need to kill for the four of the sentency points the one that you need to kill is only found in tier 14 plus maps and it is in its own arena with its own stuff and it is a i it is a monster level 84 area so a tier 17 so that's a thing. I don't know why they made the requirements for the fourth ascendancy point so crazy. Like, that seems like obscene to me that they pick something like that, but I, I don't know. It's That's the only issue I have. Honestly, that's the only issue I have so far with uh, the Wildwood. This entire Affliction expansion is just getting the 4th Zenzi point. Everything else in the expansion I think is amazing. I fucking love the Wildwood. It is an awesome, awesome system. I was actually telling someone the other day something that I think is, I think is worth relaying on stream. So, I loved Harvest. It was one of my favorite... Uh, it was one of my favorite expansion... Like, uh, not expansions. Uh, technically not an expansion. It's a uh, league. Just one of my favorite leagues that we've ever had. And I really, really loved it. The mechanic was a bit clunky, but, I mean, we got by. And then the league ended. And, in my opinion, I think the league mechanic got better. I think they refined it. And I think that removing the actual building of your garden was a good choice. It was cool in the league, but... I think it was a good choice. After that, though, they have repeatedly just beaten the hell out of Harvest over and over and over and over. And I just, there's nothing left of it that I enjoyed anymore, because, like, it was one of my favorite mechanics in the entire game. And now I just feel indifferent about its entire existence, which is really sad. But the Wildwood is set up to use the same system or similar system to harvest where it all it uses primal vivid and whatever the last wisp is just like you use the primal vivid and whatever the last essence is in harvest and i'm thinking that honestly I would like for Affliction's Wildwood to become core. 
And with a heavy heart, I say to replace Harvest. Just, like, delete what we have for Harvest right now. Replace it entirely with the Wildwood. Um, primal Wild. Wild, Vivid, and Primal. Uh, I want it to replace the Harvest system completely. Because you can find Harvest Life Force in the Wildwood. There are sections of it you can find. If those were made a little bit more common, you absolutely, absolutely could have the entire harvest system as part of this now. And honestly, I think that would be a better choice than what they currently have done, because they have just fucking gutted the system so badly. Okay, I'm gonna turn this one down a little bit. But, like, after they've gutted the system repeatedly... I don't think it's worth keeping in its current state. I don't. I It's a system I love to death, but... The parts I loved are gone. I was a crafter. Or I am a crafter. I really loved being able to like have a nice little setup of stuff that I would bring with me. And I would use all the crafts like very carefully. And I... Just I had like an entire system set up. It was like one of the most fun things. I made sure every map I had had harvest in it. I always rushed to the harvest as soon as I saw it. Like it was so much fun. But all of that's gone now. And now it's just a tradable thing that you can use to make money. And honestly, we could do without it. I think we could just have it with the Wildwood now. If they were to restore the original functionality of Harvest, which I think would be very good for the game, they argue that it would be bad. Uh, I think they don't know what they're talking about <laughs> and have some irrational fear of deterministic crafting, which is basically deterministic crafting is you craft with the knowledge that your thing will turn into a specific thing. Like you will be like, hey, I want to put life on this thing, so I'm going to put life on this thing. That's deterministic crafting. They're afraid of not having completely random things. They're like, oh, you can just make perfect gear then. I'm like, okay. What's bad about making perfect gear? That's, that sounds great. It takes time to make perfect gear. Deterministic things can be expensive. That's fine. But spending a ton of time like constantly just flipping coin after coin after coin after coin after coin, trying to just... Fuck with this weird system of strange chances that you can like, change through various crafting methods. Because let's look at it. We have the crafting table. We have fossils. We have the harvest table. We have beast crafting. We have a bunch of syndicate crafting. Like there's so many ways you can craft things. You there's the elders crafting now. There's just so many ways you can craft things. And it's, I don't know why they just wanted to get rid of all that stuff in Harvest where you could just like be like, hey, I want this specific thing. So we're just going to get all these cool crafts and we're going to pick them up. Perfect. I, honestly, I think their decision was incredibly depressing and, de and demoralizing as a player, but their decision has been made, and now that the harvest has been destroyed, they should do something to, to streamline it now. Which means, I think, rolling it into the Wildwood. Because the Wildwood, I think, is a better mechanic than their current incarnation of harvest. It's not, it wouldn't, it's not a good replacement for the previous incarn, the good incarnations of harvest, but those are gone, and they're, they've made it very clear that they have a irrational fear of it. And as long as that, that irrational fear is perpetuated in their company, it's going to it's never going to come back the way it was. Yay, level 90. But that being said, these are all just gripes as, like, a very, very long-term player. And the game is still good. It's just one of those things that... It's sad, but the world moves forwards, and I would definitely like to see the system rolled into the 
I would definitely like to see the Wildwood and the Harvest roll together. I think it would be really cool. So yeah, sorry, sorry for being a bit depressing for a moment, but I, I think that we actually could have a really cool new system if we were to roll them in together. So that's just just one thing I'm thinking. So to be clear, I think the reason where their irrational fear is stemming from is that they're worried that people will stop playing the game if they don't have these like crazy ridiculous odds to actually make good gear. And I don't think that's true. Like the the core gameplay loop, the things that people like about this game are not the crafting. It's not a fun like like I like crafting because it makes me lots of money and that's fun. But I don't like how ridiculously hard it is to make things. That's not a fun part of the game. So I think they're too afraid to try things that would make the game better because they're just afraid they're going to lose their player base. Which is sad, but I mean... Eh. Maybe they have numbers to suggest that they would actually lose a chunk of their player base or it is worse for the game. Maybe that's true. Don't know. Hard to say. Very hard to say. I don't really have anything to equip, do I? Like, I want to put this point somewhere, but I don't really have anywhere to put it. How much dex do I have? I don't have very much dex. Uh... I guess I'm just going to pick a life node, because, I mean, whatever. I have to change up my tree a little bit anyways when I get my cluster jewels, so... I mean, what's one more orb of regret? Or I guess I should say, what's one more chance orb? Be, or eight more chance orbs, because you can convert chance orbs to scourings, and scourings to orbs of regret, and that's often worth it to do. And that's usually where I get my orbs of regret is converting my my chances to scourings and scourings to regrets. Actually, yeah, like quick little tip for my viewers specifically: don't buy orbs of regret generally from the trade. Like buy orbs of chance from the trade and then convert them with the vendor in basically any town. It is if you can get eight orbs of chance for cheaper then you can get one orb of regret, which usually is true, then it is worth it to go for the orbs of chance. Always. Because, again, it's... You need four orbs of chance to make a scouring, and you need two scourings to make a orb of regret. So that's eight chance orbs. And usually I find you can get nine or ten chance orbs per chaos, and only one orb of regret per chaos. So... I find that's a really nice way of adding a little bit more efficiency to your money. Making it go a tiny, tiny bit farther. Oh, detonate. <laughs> Ooh. Scarabs. I like scarabs. Also, I'm so happy to be level 90. The, uh, the Hex Blast build is level 90. Oh. Wow, okay. I only have two towers. Um Okay. I guess I'm going to go chilling. And I'm going to go for a scout tower. So I'm going to keep powering up the I'm gonna keep powering up the chilling tower. I'm going to bring those up to Scout Tower in a second. As soon as I get to 300. I'm probably not going to level up. Oh. Oh, need to... Ah, no, I need totems. <laughs> My totems despawned. Okay. That was actually really fast. That is a lot of oils. Wow.
There's also another another fix for the crafting system that doesn't require deterministic crafting that I think they actually might consider, which would be very exciting. And that is their... How do I put this? If they changed item bases, so let's say this is item level 76. If they make it so that modifiers can only go on to an item base that are like a maximum of, let's say, 10 item levels below the uh, item level of the item, then you wouldn't get these like tier 9, tier 8, tier 7 modifiers. Like, for example, on a level 76 item base, you probably would only get tier 3 at the worst, which would mean that mo that like the gear that you would be finding is a lot better, and you actually have chances of picking up gear that is good for you. And that would help the crafting system, because that means that you would find a lot of strong gear, but you wouldn't find perfect gear. And then if people want to roll for perfect gear, they can spend how much money they want gambling on perfect gear. That is another option. And one that I think would be probably more reasonable for, for them to accept because of the way that they treat deterministic crafting. Also, first Maven's Invitation. First? Second. So that's the second Maven's Invitation. This is the first Maven's Invitation using the Hexblast build, though, so that's cool. What do we have? Uh, we have the Grave Trough boss. We have one of the mine bosses. I can't remember which one that is. Who's that? Oh, that's Vol from Wasteland. And who are you? I don't recognize you. Oh, you're from Spider Forest. Okay. There's only four bosses, so It'll be pretty quick. Oh, not Vol. Okay, so you're first. Okay, debuff, 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 debuff. And swapping back to totems in a second. Yep. Putting down new totems, swapping to debuff. And dead. Honestly, this build is very good at both bossing and mapping. It's got practically the perfect balance between the two. Okay, what should I pick? So I'm trying to go strong boxes heavily this league, because strong boxes seem to work very well with this character. These aren't actually that many strong box things. I'm doing that. I'm trying to go ultimatum, because ultimatum. I mean, all the ultimatum stuff's new. So hey, let's go after the cool new stuff. I already have the uh, the. Uh, circle decreases by 3% each round, and you get an additional round's worth of rewards. Let's see. Increased chance to reward currency. Increased chance to reward divination cards. Increased chance to reward unique items. And player cannot choose what, which ultimatum modifiers are applied to each round. Ultimatum encounters in your map's last, last three additional rounds. Cannot have a boss in the final round. I don't want that because there's a lot of things that I'm still that are still dangerous to me. If I was a better all rounding build, then I probably would want that, but I don't. So I'll start heading up there. Get that currency one. Okay, next map. What tier do I need to do Searing X-Arch? Nine. Okay, that's not bad. You know what? I'm going to try to do a tier nine. I should be fine. I I, I play so carefully. <laughs> it is my best and my worst trait. Uh, elemental weakness is actually really dangerous for me. I'm going to try not to do that. I 
It's still elemental weakness. Whatever, I'm going to risk it. I don't need to play as safe as I do. I really don't. Especially not now that I have 1% experience. If I die, I die. Whatever. This build will definitely go past 90, though. I think it'll go way past. I'd be surprised if it if it did not at least get to 92. What's going wrong? Oh, my aspect's on, so I can't summon totems. That's why nothing's happening. Okay. Purple. Follow the purple. Yellow. Oh, wait. There's a... There's a is this a... No, that's just a random... Okay, I thought this was I like when I saw this on like on the corner, I thought that was a fireplace or campfire for one of the merchants, but it wasn't. This seems to have a nice mix of everything. Oh. Ah. Okay, so this is the the treants bringing Bringing a winter, or whatever it's called. This is th these are the bosses for the third, uh, sentency point. I don't really find them all that dangerous, and I've honestly fought them quite a few times now, so <laughs> they're not too surprising to me. This this thing though, the cycle. Okay, that cycling damage reduction rare was scary. Actually, it's. Pretty good that we got that, because that just gave us 1,200 more vivid. Where's this go? Is this Was this just leading to the trance? Maybe. Unless this leads to a merchant. Uh, there's a shrine way down there, but that's obviously not happening. Cool, we're going to have a bunch of quant in this map. I like that. Did I forget to activate the Searing x -Arch? I think I did. Wait. Nope, nope, Searing x -Arch, definitely there. Definitely, definitely Searing x -Arch. <laughs> That was very much a, hey, I'm here, kind of response. <laughs> Just immediate. Okay, i got to turn on my aspect now. Hopefully these, my totems will last for a second. Okay, bring back more totems. Oh, wow, okay. That is a lot of jeweler's orbs, I love it. Love to see it. Uh, there you go. I'm going to run back to town now. <laughs> or to home base. You can all... Nope. I need that. Okay. <laughs> that, that was funny that as soon as I said, I don't know if I have Searing X-Arch, that it's just like, yes you do. Ooh. Bit of a lag spike. Come on. Okay, there we go. I don't know what that lag spike was for. I I need to stop every once in a while so that my encoder can keep up with uh, what's going on, which basically is like the the thing that records everything, more or less, and streams everything. Need like I need to keep up with that, or need it to keep up with me, I should say. So I have to pause every once in a while and wait for it. Because it gives me errors. It's like, help, I'm overloading! <laughs> Dang.
Danger with Robinson. Maybe I should have put the Searing Exarch on the weaker version of this map and not the one with elemental weakness. Specifically bringing in fire damage things again, on an elemental weakness map. That was a questionable decision. What am I... I'm at 60, 62, 65. That's not terrible. Ooh, now what do we get here? Now we're actually starting to get into the upper tier, so I don't mind checking. Tier 2, Tier 9, Tier 4, Tier 6, Tier 2, 4, Tier 7, Tier 2, okay. Nothing's good. Wait. What? Tier 2, okay. Yeah. Generally, you want to find Tier 1 modifiers. And I tend to not bother with any of the others, because generally it's only Tier 1 modifiers that are worth anything. Pure elemental hit. Cool. And here is our boss. Okay. Wow, that kind of got vaporized. Yeah, you can all come over here. I cannot wait till I can use my aspect normally. <laughs> it's going to be so nice. Yeah, I'm so heavily considering Sanctuary of Thought, the, uh, where is it, this shit, so that I can reduce my, uh, my reservation, because that would really, really help. Plus, it also would reduce my mana cost for just casting, which would help a lot, because it's, uh, the mana cost that I have is what the life cost is going to be based on when I'm using uh, the Covenant chest piece. So that would help, I think. Though so it said base life cost, so it might not help. But still, I, I think it might help a little bit. And all I'm losing is basically endurance charges and a few power charges which don't do anything. Or don't do very much. I'm essentially losing, like, 20 crit multi from the power charges, and that's it. Since, because uh, of the, um... Disciple of the for Forbidden? Disciple of the Forbidden? Disciple of the Forbidden, yeah. Because this gives me crit multi. But, eh, whatever. I don't care. That's probably a pretty good choice, especially because if it gives me enough reservation efficiency, I might be able to pick some really crazy stuff. Like, hey, if I do Mark of Submission, I might be able to trade out my Profane Proxy for a Zealotry. Or sorry, Profane Proxy out for a Mark of Submission, and then my Skitterbots out for a Zealotry. So, I don't know. <laughs> Got some good options. Because Zealotry is like a big deal for me, if I can get it. Which is why I have a uh, Huck with a Zealotry aura. He is very useful. For those who aren't familiar with it, uh, you can get one of your heist members to come with you in maps if you open a Smuggler's Cache, which is Dutiful Soldier, so that's Huck. Uh, and you can have a single aura on every one of your heist people. So whatever aura you put on Huck is the aura that you have walking around with you whenever he's with you, which is pretty often if you take all of the heist modifiers. So I just put on whatever either the best damaging or best survivability aura is for me. So I just put on Zealotry, and that gives me like another million damage. It only works in mapping, really. So there's that, but I mean, it's nice to have in mapping. Especially the defensive auras are really nice. Mapping tends to be when like ran like really weird random shit is gonna happen, like you'll wander into rares that you just do not expect to find. And that is when things can get a bit rough, which is why it's nice to have extra defensive auras there. Oh, this is a bit late. 
How much armor do I have? Uh... Oh, wow, that killed my armor. It said it would remove 3,000. It removed... That removed 15,000 armor, not 3,000. Uh, that must be... That must be 3,000 raw armor, not 3,000 armor. Oh, God, that's that's a really big... That's incredibly dangerous. Either that or it's bugged, because that does that's not that's not how it should be, I feel like, but maybe it's just poorly explained. That that would not be surprising. Something poorly explained in Path of Exile? No. No. Everything in this game is explained. That's why we have a have a help panel right here that totally explains everything in the game. This is everything that you'll ever find in the game is listed right here. Spoiler, it's not. Which is sad, because, like, that help, that help panel there actually could be really helpful. You know, like, its name. If they put the stuff in there, that would be useful. Like, they could have an entire fucking glossary in there, and it would be fine. It would be great, in fact. It's like they've forgotten. They've probably, for, they've probably genuinely forgotten the features there. <laughs> Ooh, let's, let's, can I, oh, I now have to go to a tier 10 for Searing Exarch. But I want to go to Searing Exarch map. Okay, I'll go to Arena. It's a new map anyways. Um, another elemental weakness map. Uh, okay. This can't go badly in any way possible, I'm sure. What's... What could possibly go badly about a uh, tier 10 elemental weakness map? And I'll I'll just add Juden because this map is going to be so easy. <laughs> Let's make it a bit harder. Why not? I, I'm being sarcastic if you haven't noticed that. <laughs> I'm a real sarcastic bitch sometimes. I'm aware of that. It's also funny. Sometimes. Unless you're being, like, annoyed, like, mean and sarcastic. That's never fun. But playful sarcastic's fun. I've also been made aware of something really interesting, that apparently some cultures... It's not that they don't have sarcasm, it's that it's not a notable part of their culture, so it's not really the jokes that they have, so it's not really the jokes that get perpetuated. So sarcasm's just kind of, like, lost on some cultures, which I find fascinating. And I mean, globalization, like, I'm sure... Everyone has learned a little bit of something about a little bit of everyone at this point. If you're part, of, if you're de a true denizen of the internet, but like, eh, it's just it's just interesting to find out that some cultures don't natively have sarcasm as like a main feature, like 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 other cultures that definitely do, because <laughs> some cultures like rely on it. Oh, shush, Riker. Let's see, what can we get? Damage will leeching. Ooh! Ooh, that's a sexy ring! Holy shit. Okay, how, how much is that? What? Okay, 16 times 3. No, sorry, technically it's 16 times 5. You know what? I have a calculator for a reason on my computer. 
16 times 5 plus 44. That's 124% uh, resistance on there. What can I add? Oh my god. Oh, that's a really nice setup. Uh, if I put on Cold and Chaos, that will give you... That will bring you up to 164% resistance on here. If I put Power Charges on here, it's just going to be a really fucking good ring. This is a really hard choice. I feel like 164% elemental res or 764% resistance is 144% elemental is good, like obscenely good, but also it's common enough that it's it's fine. The power charges are more rare. So I'm gonna pick this. So that's 124% resistance plus power charges. Plus minimum power charges, which is... Oh, well, I mean, that calculates it for me. I can bring it up to 120, because I often search 120 specifically. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's like 100 and... That's like 20C minimum. That's nice. And let's make this much more dangerous for me, also. <laughs> I now have an aura that turns enemies' physical damage into fire damage which synergizes with their elemental weakness, which makes it even more dangerous for me. That's not a terrible plan. She says, knowing that her doom will follow. That's fine, I just have to not get hit by anything. That's easy, right? I'm so good at dying. <laughs> I have mere moments left. I really I really need to overcap my resistances a little bit. Unfortunately, like that's something I struggle with, which actually might end up being the reason why I pick Profane Proxy over Mark of Submission is because Profane Proxy has like 50% elemental resistances on it. Like 25 25 for cold and lightning. I feel like I missed a few people involved in that. Oh so well. Mm hmm. Lehep? Al Alehep? What is it? Lehep of all. That's what it's called. Like, the best all-rounder ring in the game. <laughs> and also one of the most common. Oh, wow. Apparently it rolled really well. Oh, yeah, it almost rolled maximum on the element of resistance. Rolled incredibly high on rarity. Mid on attributes. High on damage. Yeah, that's actually a really good one. Wow, you're a real douche. <laughs> Trial Master. I think that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't like Ultimatum, was that he's, like, a real dick. And I am a sensitive potato. How could you hurt my feelings like this? Uh, okay. I'm gonna pick Blood Altar. Oh god, I'm doing this with the, uh, the ridiculous, uh, fire buff aura for enemies. This is a bad idea. Why am I doing this? Last hinder you. Sure, what, what could possibly go wrong with that? What could possibly fucking go wrong with that? Can't think of anything that could possibly go wrong with this. I'm so going to die soon. Scaling damage. Ow. Yeah. That, yeah, that's warranted. 
I flew too close to the sun. Icarus has been incinerated. Damn, I should have put down a portal, like, ever. That would have been smart. All right, turn off my aspect so I can actually attack things. Turn it back on so I can stack up on bosses. Okay, there's spider webs now. Let's take out all the fire hellhounds. Where are the bosses? Okay, hello. I turned on the aspect a bit late. <laughs> oh well. There's still another syndicate encounter somewhere that I hopefully haven't walked past. Oh, it's right here. Oh, that's convenient. Oh, that's not a door. I don't know why I thought there'd be a door there. I was just like, yeah, there's definitely a door here. I say as I just, like, walk into the wall. I do that in real life, too. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, yeah, there's definitely a door here, and just walk into, like, just walk into the wall beside the door, and it's like, why? Brain, you have failed me! <laughs> You're supposed to help me with these things! Ow! Fuck. That's that's definitely... Oh, I only need three to survive, so actually this might work. Why is part of the map cut off? It's weird. Whatever. As long as it doesn't actually cause me issues, I'm fine. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Kill him before everything else goes away. Cool. Oh, well, there's four of them here. Wow. I usually do not see four. Somehow we managed to get four without the boss showing up. How do we get four without showing the boss? Okay. Giannis. Uh, you'll give me research XP, which will give me 36, so 75. Yeah, okay, that'll be enough to... We don't... Okay, that's enough to hit a safe house. We don't need any more. Rank you up for later. Uh, nope. Mm. We'll let him connect to more people. I got pretty damn lucky on the call in there. Called in a lot of people. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, tier 1% life, tier 1 armor and life, and then a tier 7 life. That would be great if this had more than two sockets. Yeah, that's, that's not really worth anything, unfortunately. And then this is just crap, unfortunately. Nope. Okay. Hopefully I won't get eaten by anything else in this map. Need to stay away from monsters before they eat me. I don't want to be a meal for a monster. I don't know why, but my brain has 
very fun ideas of what it likes to... It takes a lot of creative liberty sometimes with where it likes to go. So the thought that ran through my head was, man, I don't want to be made into donuts by the monster. And I'm like, how would that happen? <laughs> it would be suck to, suck to be made into a donut. But also, what the fuck? What the hell, brain? You're supposed to store, like, useful information, not whatever the hell that was. Path of Exile facts and random other knowledge that has no bearing on anything. Ooh, Chaos Orbs. I'll take some Corbs. No corbs. Darn. Oh, is this it? Are we out? I was really hoping I could get a little bit more since I have the chaos orb chance to drop. Like, chance to drop on kill, but... Nope, we're out. Oh well. I should stop playing so fast and lose soon and, like, actually try to level. But I mean, it doesn't matter. I only have five percent XP. I'm gonna really quickly check our playlist, see how it's going. Where are we in our playlist? Over there. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm still, like, not very used to SoundCloud. So, I've had an issue lately, or I had an issue in the last stream, where it just, like, randomly picked something that was copyrighted and just threw it in, because there's a here-related stations option I forgot, to, or I didn't know to toggle off. And I had, like, three minutes of my, my last VOD muted. Just because... SoundCloud threw something random in, which is unfortunate. I mean, I guess it's my fault for not knowing the system, but, like, it's a little sad. Okay. Actually, why am I pricing things? I can do that later. Okay, back to tier nines. Let's see if we can find something interesting. I really would like to get up into red maps, but actually, you know what? No, I should be pushing higher maps so I can get into red maps because currently I'm not getting into red maps because I do not have any red maps. Because you know that's kind of required to get into red maps is to have red maps. So I'm going to push some of the tier 10s while I have no XP, and if I die, I die. If I don't, I don't. Um, I should actually not, I should actually work on my Pantheon too. That's most likely to kill me. Flat Chaos damage is most likely to kill me right now, which would... Ideally, I'd want the the upgrade Shikari, but I don't have that yet. Or the reduced effect of curses from Yugul. An upgrade of Yugul would be good, but I don't have that yet either. I mean, I don't really need... The Solaris is not useful for this. I just had it on for the lab. I guess I'll swap over to Lunaris for now. Ideally, I'm going to want to use Lunaris, but upgrade her a lot. So, we'll see. 
I probably, I'm either going to keep Rislatha or I'm going to move over to sh an upgrade Shikari later, because Chaos Damage is the most dangerous thing to me. And I have yet to f find a way to mitigate that. Whoa, laggy. My poor graphics card is not, not built for this. <laughs> well, so I already opened this map, so I'm going to finish it, but I will go to my tier 10s next. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect cannibal. That's worth two. Usually the perfect ones. They say perfect on them. Those are the ones that are really good. Oh! Oh my god, that's actually worth like 15c. Uh, okay, I need to come back here as quickly as possible and grab that. I need 500 purple for that. Primal. Or not primal, wild. Uh, hmm. Is there any near the start? Because I saw a bunch in the start of just wisps in general. Okay, here. Cool. Now, before I forget where it is, go around here. Okay, apparently the where is it? The prime, the spirit of fortune apparently is very valuable because of the lightning damage of nearby allies is lucky. So I guess any lightning build would want that. Generally, the perfect corpses are worth a cu at least a couple C each. That'll probably go down over time, but for now, they're worth it to pick up if you see them. Porcelain Queen. Chisel. Chisels are good. I don't really have a good way of sustaining them yet, so that is why I don't use very many chisels yet. Okay, kill all that stuff off. Cool. Well, I got a decent amount of blue there, so that's good. Get some extra currency, ideally. I think the ideal mix is to get a mixture of, like, a good, like, half and half Cs of uh, blue and yellow for quantum. And whatever the fuck the other thing is, currency. Called a quantum currency. I've heard rarity can also be kind of useful if you mix it in with one of the others. I don't really know what what would work well. Because like I know rarity is mainly for getting rare items, which is kind of counterintuitive to what I would expect. Because like it's in the name, yes, I get that, but I would expect it to just like I would kind of expect rarity to like give you rarer items, not more rare items. <laughs> But, I mean, that's just how my brain works. Not necessarily how anyone else's works. Because if anyone else's brain works like mine, they... I don't know how they would deal with themselves. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Weird non sequitur, but I actually really liked playing with the Borderlands games, kind of because like the ow, because like the ins like the genuinely insane characters in there, like their brains worked in a way that kind of reminded me how my brain works sometimes, and I'm like, friend, <laughs> you're also crazy. <laughs>
Maybe just I like the the dark humor because I really like dark humor and the the constant like humor with the cannibals is certainly my cup of tea. Very funny. I just appreciate the darkness. The darkness. Like an edgy teenager. I'll see why I used to Lincoln, listen to so much Lincoln Park. <laughs> it's like that subreddit, uh, I'm 13 and this is deep. <laughs> Almost done this map. Then we'll push to the next tier. Win back your pride. Hmm. Well, if I die, I have 1% experience, so whatever. I'm going to pick the bad modifier, um, because my... <laughs> well, because A, I, I, didn't, I didn't actually check to see, but I do wonder if Ultimatum has uh, some things where it's like, if you pick these, these specific modifiers, you can get a thing. That's yeah, totally not a thing. It's just complete Ultimatum waves. Okay, well, whatever. I was like, maybe you need to pick specific modifiers. Mm, apparently not. Uh, no, I need things to be affected by curses. That would be really bad. It's actually one of the reasons why I was considering uh, the primalist, I think, the one that has charms, because you can get, uh, you can uh, hex hexproof monsters charms, and those seem pretty nice as someone who needs to hex things to deal notable damage. Okay, I don't need to hex things, but, like, it's really nice. <laughs> it's a lot of damage. Oh. Okay, I'll oh, turn off my aspect. I keep my totems up. Oh, there's a soul eater in the middle of that. Yeah, you know what? Fuck that. I won't, that soul eater can go away now. Because if I don't pick this stuff up, I'm just going to die and get lose it all, so... The moment I see a giant soul eater mob, I'm like, mm, no, I'm I'm gonna just not do that. That is that is my plan. I'm just gonna not do it because not doing it sounds better than doing it. Okay, what level do I need to do? I could do a tier nine eater, so I'm just gonna do Maven. I like being the most efficient possible, so like I want to run a tier 9 map for the Eater of Worlds rather than running a tier 10 and then having to run another tier 10. It probably doesn't matter in any way, shape, or form, but in my brain it's like, this is efficient. And anything that's efficient in my brain is like, yeah, exciting! Efficiency! Math! <laughs> Oh, 
that was a surprisingly durable ground dragon thing. Yellow. Mm. Hello, friend. Some of these, some of these creatures actually look like they're supposed to be bosses, even though they're not. Like, like the fungal reavers, for example, they look kind of scary. Like they are supposed to be a boss, but I mean, they're not. Ah, uh, this. So this is the experimental harvest I was talking about earlier, um, where like you can get, uh, you can just fight harvest monsters right here. And when you're done, you get, like, a chunk of Harvest Life Force. Like, right now. Yeah, 800, for example. And that's a lot. That's, like, the... That's more than sometimes I get from an entire garden at this level. So, like, just, just fucking roll Harvest in with here. Just get rid of Harvest otherwise. Make it the wild wood crafting table or whatever. I don't care. I mean, you could stay the harder crafting table. Ooh, blue. Currency wisps. And now I'm back to yellow. We kill the monsters because they also drop wisps a lot of the time. Got that stuff up. Ooh, the friend over there. Okay. Yeah, just get all that wisps. So interesting thing about the application of wisps to empower monsters, they it looks like it explodes out when you complete the uh, when you complete the forest and like it goes and applies to things. It doesn't. It does not apply to things when that happens. It applies to things when you're near them. You wonder how I know? Because if it only applies to things that are already in existence in the map, then it will only apply to uh, of things that were there when you finished the forest. So let's say you open a ritual, there won't be any empowered monsters in there. But there is. Which makes me believe that what you're actually doing is you are like a bumblebee, you are pollinating things with wisps, basically. And bumblebees are adorable, so yeah. I'm actually afraid of like a lot of bees, but like I don't know, like, ever since I found out that bumblebees can't actually hurt you, I've been a lot less afraid of them. Also, that's a lot of fucking scarabs. Yeah, specifically bumblebees, like, I didn't I didn't realize the longest time that they don't have stingers, the big ones. They're just, like, little lumbering creatures. It's like a 100% passive bear. <laughs> They'll, like, run by and, like, bonk into you. But that's it. Weird creatures. Uh, I'll pick Siphoning Monsters. That's actually not that dangerous, because current energy shield? Whatever, I don't care about energy shield. Current mana? Yeah, that's 21 mana you're siphoning, and I have 100 and... What is it? 125 mana per second. Okay, cooldowns take longer. Uh, that's only going to affect my Blight and my Molten Shell. That's fine, I don't care. I'll just have to hold on to my Molten Shell till later. Oh, technically it, it also affects my Flame Dash, but I don't really use Flame Dash when I'm in an Ultimatum, because not much room to Flame Dash. That's like the only situation I would flame dash. Ooh. Starting to take some damage, actually. Last well, Cinder you. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start bunkering. Gonna hide in the corner here. 
Lacrum Splinters. Uh, sure, I can lose charges every every second. I can't lose charges. And they can gain charges on hit. Well, they can't steal charges from me, so that's fine. And also, I'm kind of hidden. Um, but Razor Dance is also kind of safe. You know, I'm going to pick Razor Dance, actually, because I think that's an even safer pick. Ow. 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 No. Okay, I need to I need to stop this as soon as as soon as I get through this round I need to stop. I need to get through this round. I need to get through this round. Oh no, this is not good. Woo! Okay, take rewards. Take rewards and run. <laughs> Where's the boss? I would have the boss would be in the bottom right, but she wasn't. Where is she? Uh, okay. I missed that. Shouldn't have stopped moving. I'm I'm struggling at tier ten. It's it's a lot harder than well tier nine, I guess. It's just hard enough that it's a problem. I need to actually have like a fully functional build for this, unfortunately, and I'm missing shit. Like my gems are still wrong. Not supposed to have faster casting. I'm supposed to have. Let's see. I'm supposed to have. Do I? I have the increased critical damage. I'm supposed to have void manipulation instead of faster casting, and cruelty instead of uh, inspiration. I'm also supposed to have like a bunch of clusters that I don't have. I'm going to try switching over to uh, to using Sanctum of Thought for mana cost reduction stuff, though. Let's see how that goes. Ooh, okay. Got Zealotry now. I'm going to hit a bit harder. That's good. That's actually probably going to save me some deaths here. Huck is really strong, because he also gives you combat ready which increases your damage, attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. So, he's like a really, he's a really nice support character to have. Oh my gosh! That's literally the gem I need. And it's also a 23, which would have been the one, like, a, which is what I would have bought. Okay, perfect. In you go. Done. That That's literally one of my build items I needed. <laughs> Okay, sure. That was random, but oh no, don't don't want to die. That was random but useful. Okay, cool. I can definitely definitely do uh, my void manipulation. Actually, I can, uh, my void manipulation is only seventy. I can definitely do my uh, hypothermia. Die. Okay. I'm happy that I was able to brute force that because she can be kind of scary with her firestorms because she stacks firestorms on top of each other. Oh, this is the place where I died. Yeah, almost through. Ah, eh. I hate the flame lobbers. Actually, that might not be their name this game. I'm thinking of uh, a character. I'm thinking of enemies that are like almost identical to them that are in Hades, which is also a very, very fucking good game. And I haven't touched it in a while for some awful reason. Okay, so you know what? 
let's let's swap some stuff around actually. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm back at the path of building. Let's just just for the last little bit of the stream, since we're two hours and forty minutes in now. I just want to look at what we can get done here. So, oh, hold on one second. Right, I always forget that it bricks itself. Okay, there we go. It bricks itself if I swap from a vertical view to a horizontal view. And I my I have uh, one vertical monitor as my main one, or sorry, one horizontal monitor as my main one, like a normal landscape monitor. And then I have two uh, portraits, so like vertical monitors on either side. That's fun. Okay, so here's here's what I was was thinking of doing. So I can I can always re reverse this if needed. So I'm gonna take out Ritual Awakening. I'm gonna take out that. Move over to Sanctum of Thought. Okay. I'm gonna tank my damage a little bit, but that's fine. I'm gonna tank my damage a lot, but that's okay because we're switching things around, and that's just part of it. Sanctum of Thought. Wait, no. Not Sanctum of Thought. I already have Sanctum of Thought. I need um, Virtual Awakening. Right? I'm not crazy? Yeah, Virtual Awakening. Okay. Oh my gosh, the mana cost difference is crazy! <laughs> okay, so that's been swapped around. Uh, Obviously, we're still lower on damage, that's okay, because I think this actually is going to make more damage, ultimately. So I'm going to take out the Charisma now. Nope, not Corruption, I want Anointment. Okay. Okay, I'm probably going for Disciple of the Forbidden. No, Disciple of Slaughter. I have Disciple of Forbidden. Uh, so technically, Surveillance is better, but Disciple of the Slaughter is better is is actually better like in general because it gives you a chance to get frenzy charges which is I, something i do not have right now and it's only for mapping but i mean eh i mean it's not so bad so i'm gonna swap that over now that brings me up to seven points or seven point nine which is great we still have a lot of Still have a lot of uh, mana I can work with now. Uh, so I removed the reservation efficiency I was getting over here from Charisma. Where else was I getting it? I want to remove something else. I don't remember what, though. Mm. Not sure. You can get more reservation efficiency corrupted onto a helmet, but getting a corrupted sandstorm visage is like that's that's a real <laughs> that's a real challenge. <laughs> you are you are making decisions that are challenging there. Okay. So I lost some life regen, which sucks. But suddenly things are a lot more efficient. I did get more energy shield, which, again, I don't actually give a shit about, uh, unless I go Eldritch Battery to make it easier to cast things, but I don't... I don't fucking care. Energy shield isn't very useful to me, for the most part. I'm really tanking my... Uh, my resistances here. It's really hard to maintain them right now. But yeah, so I traded a very small amount of damage, essentially 200,000, and about 300 life regen. And now I can much easier cast my stuff. I'll be able to use Aspect of the Spider, Bark Skin, Determination, and Summon Skitterbots all together safely. Now here's the next question, Zealotry. If I take out Summon Skitterbots, I can now run Zealotry instead. 
which brings up to 8.3. So that is now better. That is now about 160,000 better than before by doing that. The other option, just so you know, is you te can technically just take Ritual Awakening and take Conviction of Power and then get a Forbidden Flesh and Flame for Sanctuary of Thought. The reason why I'm not doing that is because Ritual Awakening, it's probably going to cost you about 2 div to get a set. Sanctuary of Thought, it's probably going to cost you about 80 div to get a set, maybe more. So it's much more cost effective to do it this way. And I'll be taking Divine Guidance instead of Conviction of Power, which kind of sucks because I don't really want to have damages... 10% of damage is taken from mana before life. That kind of sucks, because it makes it harder for me to maintain my mana. But... Whatever. That should be fine. I think this is a much more realistic and efficient way to do things. So then, like, the question becomes... Uh, I have to replace getter bots then. Which means that... I need to use Mark of Submission. I cannot use I cannot use profane proxy like I have been using, which means that I am really going to struggle on resistances now. Uh, I have like a very specific ring here. Uh, oh, that's actually not going to help. Uh, hmm. So this ring, I cannot get more fire res on it at all, and there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, the only way I can do that, the only way I can cap my fire res now, is by buying the 18c apiece prismatic catalysts, and to cap them, because I need three. Okay, 9, 10. Okay, so I need 10, which means I have to spend about 180 chaos to do this, to get this ideal ring, just to cap my fucking fire res. Actually, no, it's not true, because there is the, uh, the all res is also getting it. Okay, there we go. So we need seven, then. Okay, so that, with seven Prismatic Catalysts, we have enough that we can relatively easily overcap now. Wait, how did that go up so much? Something's wrong there. Okay, 4%. Okay, we can cap with 4%. Ideally, I like to be 3% above cap, because that allows us to use, if we go back to it, transitioning back to Path of Exile, that allows us to use the Atlas passive skill. Where is it? Packed with energy. You gain 1% of all maximum elemental resistances. Sorry, you gain 1% to all maximum elemental resistances for each volta Voltaxic Sulfite vein or chest found in your maps. So usually there's three, which means that you can go up to three percent over. Which I'm going and I'm going to be going for this soon because as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter whether you like delve, you like always go packed with energy because you can just put Nico on your maps and suddenly suddenly you have a hundred and five percent increased damage, forty five percent increased movement speed. And 3% increased maximum elemental resistances. Like, there's no reason not to pick that. Then your your Nico missions just become, like, map buffs, basically. Which is amazing. Which is why I always pick that. It's why I always take Pack with Energy. I always take Huck for the extra aura. I take Cuck, Huck for the... Uh, Cuck. I take Cuck for the... Uh, um For his buff. And I take... Mighty Hunter for Einhars, so that he stays with you after his, his missions. So if you run out of Nico missions, which mainly give you damage and movement speed and utility, you can take Einhar instead, who gives you more protection, because his boon of the first ones, his buff, 
besides the fact that he it distracts himself, the boon of the first ones gives you a bunch of life regen, which does make you a bit safer. But that's like three major buffs you can get to yourself while mapping that just straight up make mapping faster and easier. So I always go for those because it's just good. Speaking of which, that's actually more important than going for ultimatum stuff. I'm going to head this way. I'm going to be going for this because, I mean, pack with energy is irreplaceable. Technically, I could actually move this. No, if I went for Cryptic Gateway, it's not going to help me because it's only one I'd be saving. And that's not enough. No, technically, I could replace these. But that's just, that's slightly worse because technically, like, I'll have two gateways allocated, but then I'll just have 1% less chance for maps to be duplicated, so whatever. But anyways, going back to Path of Building. Transitioning back. So without Skitterbots, with using Mark of Submission, uh, with using Zealotry, and like I could attempt to fit Skitterbots in. Like I, that's possible. It brings me to negative 6%. It is possible to fit Skitterbots in somehow. Uh, it would be incredibly hard to do. Uh, I technically could, uh, the only way I think I could do that is if I, okay, I'm going to take Apex Mode, I'm going to replace Apex Mode with Flame, remove Flame, I'm going to grab a cluster, dual cluster that is small dual cluster, one of the one of the most expensive small drill clusters that you can get even without any modifiers on it. Did I grab no, this is a big drill cluster. Small. Okay. Mana reservation efficiency. Two passives. Uh where is it? Righteous Path, there it is. Reduces the... That reduces the um, reservation of Zealotry. It gives increased effect of, crit of Consecrated Ground I create, but I'm not going to be creating Consecrated Ground anymore. Uh, the other option is I can take Uncompromising, which is for Determination, and it increases my Threat and Stun threshold. Which, I mean, that's just straight up better. So let's say I take that. For reservation, take that, shove that into the socket there, grab that. I suddenly have 4% uh, unreserved, but at that point, I also have to go over here, grab Eldritch Battery, and then I could use Eldritch Battery instead of uh, mana to cast my skills. And that would also mean I'd have to somehow make up for the new points, because so that's six more points I have to fit in somehow. But it's another possibility. And if I can do that, that also gives me a 500,000 damage increase. And it lets me continue to use the Profane Proxy, which means that it's cheaper because I don't have to buy Prismatic Catalyst, because now I have all these extra, cat all these extra resistances from Profane Proxy. So... This is, build crafting is just one giant fucking balancing act. Just, no matter how you set it up, it's just one big balancing act. And now, now in this case, I would be changing this out, and I would go for a new ring. This time, I would be picking either a topaz or a sapphire. I'll just pick a sapphire for the sake of it. Okay, grab random life. Sure, life's fine. All res. Fire. Lightning. 40. 
Okay, so this sapphire ring now would cap me. Right there. So that fixes the that fixes my uh, resistances. Again, I am still over now, so that is another problem that has to be fixed. But I mean, there's always more problems. Also, this extra three hundred thousand damage I shouldn't have, because that's good. It is good, but I need crit reduction instead. So if I I'd have to, I have to chop something off here to make it more efficient. Uh, I've taken out the... Oh, I don't need this anymore. Because I only have... Is that giving... Oh, it, it thinks that I was gaining four maximum power charges. I do not have four maximum power charges anymore. That has now changed. I don't have endurance charges. I have one power charge now. I forgot to change that, and that's a big problem. And now there's this as a problem, so that's not very useful anymore, so I take that out. Now I'm down to 7.3. There's just... <laughs> it's like this giant balancing act, because now I'm back to 89, but I'm down to 7.3 million again. As opposed to the 8.1 I had before I made all these changes. But now I also have more auras, but that's not useful as much. Like, there's, there's a lot going on really is a lot going on so it's 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 so hard to say what the best choice is here i mean something else might be now more powerful and now i should pick that instead i still have an extra point that i can put into something now and if i take out certain other things i might be able to put more points in like there's lots there's lots of things I can still do here to change out this build to make it even better. So it's it's just a process, as everything is. Oh, I don't need this anymore because I only need 111 decks for. For hypothermia. So I, I'm down two points now. So I usually bring my build up to 90. So I can just put two points somewhere now. Don't know where I put two points. At this, at this point there's just so much shit going on. It's really hard to decide where to put things. I'm going over here now. So maybe there's new stuff over here that I can pick up. That would be like crazy potentially. Oh, this fucking Throat Seeker here, which gives me crit, a tons of crit multi. It's only crit multi. That's uh, 640,000 for 5 points. If I do something kind of questionable, I can uh, pick Throat Seeker there. Pick Throat Seeker up, and if I kill off Faith and Steel, which decreases my... Oh god, it decreases my physical damage reduction even more, and also my resistances are bad now. So I have to go back and I have to fix my physical... My resistances now! <laughs> and this is already at 40, so it's going to be hard to increase this too much more. So let's say 40 three because I don't want to I don't want to go too much higher because it gets really hard to get the right stuff then. Fifteen percent amount of resistances that brings us up to sixty six. At this point we absolutely need prismatic catalysts, like a lot of them. And now I need twenty of those and that's almost four hundred C like <laughs> Uh This game's crazy. But I'm almost back up to the damage that I had before. <laughs> but I also just added, like, a shit ton of expense to it. Because that, that undying cluster, or not undying, um, uncompromising cluster is going to be worth, like, somewhere between 50 to 60. This ring 
without the resistance modifiers is probably going to be worth like 20 to 40. The resistance modifiers are going to be worth 360 C. Just makes things lots more complicated. <laughs> Hmm. I'm going to keep playing with it. It's going to take some time, but I'm going to keep playing with it, and we'll see what we can end up picking up from this. Maybe, maybe we'll find something that's better. Something that'll make everything better. I don't know if it'll happen, but we'll just have to see. I feel like this can be made more efficient somehow, but I don't really see a way yet. I mean, if I can find 640 more damage for better than five points, then I can pick up that. But I mean, I don't, I don't immediately know where to put that because there's not. Well, I mean, oh wow, okay, that's four points for 710. Okay, fuck that. Okay, now I'm back on par with 90. And I'm almost back to the right amount of damage again. Technically, I have made this easier because my mana cost is no longer an issue. So I now have a functionally similar build to what I had earlier. The only difference is that, like, I don't have any more mana issues. Because... It's just going to be Energy Shield now I'll be spending for the most part. My physical damage reduction is worse. My resistances are meh. And my damage is worse. Did I gain anything from doing that? <laughs> Maybe the issue was trying to somehow fit in uh, Zealotry. I mean, like, it might be worth it just to, like, can Zealotry and go in a different method. Take out the uh, extra points there, put them somewhere else. It's really hard to say. I didn't realize the big difference that having power charges was going to make for me. Because apparently, having four power charges... Oh, wait. Wait, does that not make any difference? It makes zero difference having power charges for me, apparently. Oh, it only made a difference because I had uh, the crit multi one. Then it was making a chunk of damage difference each time. That's why. If I could somehow get by without the Eldritch Battery, then I could go over here, grab Crackling Speed, and suddenly have a chunk more damage again. And it's also worth noting, going into, like, going past all of this, and I don't even have a spot for my Rich Fire anymore, but, like, if I look at my buffs, if I can Vol Blight, I get another million damage. If I can get Wither to bring me up to even, let's say, 10 Wither stacks, I get another million damage, just from those four extra stacks. If I can somehow fit Vol Righteous Fire in and use that, then I need to hit the button. Uh, that's another 1.5 million. So, like, this this build can spike damage a lot, but, I don't know, it's, it's hard to find the happy medium, and it's going to take a lot of work to find that happy medium. So, I'm going to keep working on it. You'll hear on Thursday what I where I end up with it. I'll also have my character better together, which is what I'm hoping for. So that's how things are going to go. So we're a little over three hours in now. Thank you all for coming and watching. I really appreciate it. For everyone who's here and has been here, I really appreciate your presence. It makes streaming, it makes playing more fun to be able to stream, and it matters a lot to me. So thank you. For those who are watching on YouTube, thank you for your time. If you can like and subscribe, you can see more cool content. And comment down below if you have any other cool ideas for future streams, videos, etc. I'd love to hear it. Or just any questions.
or even thoughts on the builds, whatever you want to do.